because the thing about, for example, freestyle that I, I enjoy so much about Daniel License, what really shocked me was his size. Like when you're a big person doing things, there's so much energy. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gornation. My name is Phil and today's guest is somebody I was looking forward to for a long time. Somebody who shocked and surprised everybody at the FIBO competition a few weeks ago. What can I say? Nordic champion, Swedish champion with only 19 years old and he's 86 kg heavy. So I'm super looking forward to this interview. Thanks that you take the time, Simon Imhauser. Thank you so much. I'm extremely happy to be here. I'm also really happy that you take the time. We received a lot of quality questions from the community and uh, we have uh, like interesting topics that we can talk about. First of all, how are you doing these days? How was uh, the FIBO competition for you? Uh, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, you know, the FIBO competition was like, it was insane for me. Uh, the first competition I've been on where the, the level on the athletes, it's, it's so high. And um Yeah, just being in the aura by being surrounded by so many great people, it's extremely inspiring. Uh, so my training and workouts after FIBO has probably been the best ones for me ever. Uh, so yeah, they definitely had a good influence on me. That's cool. That's super cool. Like when I remember when uh, did we meet first time or when did I see you first time per, uh, performing? It was uh, 2019 at the Beast of the Bars competition in uh, in Stockholm, Sweden at the Fitness Festival. <laughs> Um, and uh, like back then it was already really mind blowing because um, you were like really new to the sport, uh, like yeah. really, really fresh. Um, and I remember you winning the competition. Uh, you uh, did first place against like Dan Rosenberg and Tom Rosenberg, which was uh, extremely, extremely crazy. Um, yeah, this was the first time I saw you. And back then, how long did you, did you do calisthenics and street workout? Roughly two years. Uh, wow. And that's maybe the thing. Like I was super underdog in that competition. And uh, the same was with actually the FIBA now. It's like people don't expect you to deliver anything. And uh, since I didn't have the pressure, I think that's one of the reasons I actually managed to win it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I didn't have the pressure that I had to perform anything. So I just, like, I just, I just did what I usually do. That's super crazy. And uh, yeah, like this for the FIBO, um, what, like, what did you think when you're like, you did the qualification super nice round was really safe entry in my opinion into the uh, top, uh, top 16. Um, but uh, like then your first battle was against Daniel Christoph, uh, yeah. who is like current world champion. What were your thoughts when, when it was announced? Well, to be honest, I like the moment I heard his name, I was, Like, okay, I'm done. Like, <laughs> I already know I was going to lose it. Uh, but, like, before I went to the competition, we always spoke about, like, it would be so awesome to be in a battle against him. And uh, I was just happy, to be honest, that I got to battle him. Uh, and that's probably why I delivered on that battle as well. Like, I was super happy with my performance and, like, landed the things I wanted to land. Uh, and then, yes, it was unlucky that his level is so, so high, <laughs> but yeah, super happy to battle against him. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. So, yeah. Like I, I also, I, I didn't know how to react because I was on the one hand, I was really, I, I, I had the same thought that it will be really, really, really difficult. Even yeah. like nothing is impossible in calisthenics. Like everybody can fail, even, even yeah, Daniel. Exactly. So um, but still, I was like sad in one eye and uh, happy on in the other because uh, the battle would be insane. But um, yeah, I, I mean, it was a great battle, and uh, you did uh, your the things that you planned. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So you did like uh, the the front flip combo, for example, on on the P bars, uh, which also went viral on on Instagram, <laughs> by the way. Um, yeah. So um, maybe also overall. Yeah, overall, I was super happy. Like, it didn't even matter that I lost because I, I know I didn't stand a chance at that point. Uh, so, you know, just being happy to be in the moment, to be honest. Yeah. And maybe it was kind of the same mindset then if you had, like, not the big pressure or, like, not yeah, the pressure. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just being, like, 
in Sweden, no one knows about like athletes in Sweden. Mm-hmm. So just being on, in the FIBO, only people only know me via maybe Instagram and so on, and that I'm a Grenadian athlete. But overall, most people didn't know who I was, and uh, just having that in mind is a good way, in my opinion, a good thought. Like no one expected to do anything, so you might just show them what you got. True. Yeah, because, I mean, we talked about it before the FIBO competition, like um, in the past, you only participated in, in, in Sweden and the Nordic countries. Yeah. Uh, this was your only area of like competing as a professional athlete. Um, and now it was the first it, first competition outside of this, um, yeah, the Nordic countries. Yeah. So it was just huge being there. And uh, before I went to the competition, I was like thinking about not going. Mm-hmm. Because I, in my mind, I'm still like this small athlete that doesn't really belong on the big stage. And, uh, you know, it's probably the people around me pushing me to compete. Uh, but I'm, I'm super happy I went. And, uh, like, you get so much from being on big competitions. Uh, just meeting other people and motivation-wise as well. And uh, being inspired. So definitely going to compete more outside of sweden <laughs> that's cool can you maybe tell us a little about your the mindset that um you had to develop to participate i mean it's also influ- you're also influenced by the great surrounding that you have with daniel yeah. with Malin, with dana like you have a really close uh, family like and strong uh, community there in, in sweden but like how did you develop and how did you come over your fear that you're the small guy, you know, like the, not the small physical guy, but small, uh, like athlete, unexperienced yeah, athlete yeah. on the stage. Yeah. I mean, I'm be as a person, I always try to be very humble and mm-hmm. never really brag about like the level I am at. Uh, so Daniel does the work for me, always <laughs> promoting me, <laughs> but they are the ones like, pushing me and telling me like, yeah, you are good enough. Uh, and the thing about, and they also remind me like what I've done, like the competition I've been at, like I do what I do, uh, usually don't fail as much either. And uh, yeah, they just make me settle and like believe you can, you can achieve <laughs> at every competition. And even though you have like high people uh, that you're battling against, Uh, it doesn't really matter if you win or lose or just being there is going to make you a much greater athlete. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy I got people around me though because on your own, it's really hard to take these first steps. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Somebody also asked, um, do you have a, like a coach or a mentor? Um, that's also an interesting question. Daniel, I would definitely say is my like i see him as a coach um he uh, yeah me and him we do like my schedule together uh but like motivational wise and uh yeah inspiring his uh like he and marlin they always follow me uh so they were in germany <laughs> motivated thing and pushing me and yeah they've always been like big supporters uh so Definitely see them as my coaches. That's cool. If you have to say, like, um, as a as a as a coach for freestyle, what's the what's the most important thing? Is it the mindset thing, or do you, do do they teach you a lot of about technique, or like, what's the most important thing? Probably mindset, <laughs> mm-hmm. because it maybe two years ago I started doing tricks that they never done. No, and mm-hmm. at that point it's like. They know also it's all about mindset. Like you got to see the tricks before you go on the bar and do them. And uh, yeah, they also push me because sometimes I have the, um, the thing where I, when I fear to do something, I kind of let it go. There was a period where I had a 540 struggle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what happened is like I had like four months where I didn't do no 540 attempts. And uh, at those points, they're like, okay, come on, just do some attempts at least. And uh, so in that sense, they just motivate me to try things. And um, sometimes techniques as well, like they can see when I'm doing something, If even though they can't do the trick themselves, they see that something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
yeah, they they motivate and like help me in many, many areas. That's super cool. You said that it's important to see the move before you before you can do it, and uh, that yeah. you see yourself doing it. Can you explain that more? Like, why is that important? Uh, like both in dynamics and in uh, in statics, I would say. So if like sometimes what I do before competing or doing a new trick, I just listen to some motivational speeches or like some calm music. And like if you close your eyes and you can still really see yourself doing the trick, like in, almost like a dream. Uh, so if you can see yourself doing the move, your body automatically adapts to it. Uh, so one one big move that I've been struggling with and landing like on and off is the front lift re grab. Mm -hmm. And um, when I land it, I can truly, it's when I can see myself doing it. Uh, and the same with static. Sometimes like you can look at someone doing a planche or a front lever um, and you get hyped <laughs> mm -hmm. and you can see yourself like, okay, I can feel the front lever before doing it. Like those attempts are probably one of the best ones uh, because already before you go up to the bar, you to some extent already already have done it. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been mean by seeing the trick. Like if you can imagine yourself doing it, it's definitely possible. Wow, interesting. Like uh, for me, it sounds like visualization uh, and uh, yeah. also some kind of meditation, even though meditation yeah, to some often... extent. <laughs> meditation of for a lot of people sounds really spiritual etc but it's also like kind of meditation um interesting but sometimes it's uh, it's false mm -hmm. in the beginning when i started off i i looked at daniel license and this big efforts doing uh both freestyle but mostly statics in the beginning uh so i could lay in my bed late at night watching them doing the statics and i'm like man i gotta try it mm -hmm. uh go up feel like i can do it trying the planche and just boom, falling down <laughs> straight <laughs> up. But uh, most of the times it, it helps. Definitely does. Cool. Uh, you also said uh, a few minutes ago that you uh, like that you rarely fail. And it's also something that, I, that um, was interesting for me. Like you had to, at the FIBO, you had to put away all the mats uh, because yeah. even like already because of your height, I guess. Yeah, um, exactly. But you also seemed really confident, uh, confident that you won't fall. Can you tell us more how you achieved this security, that, that safety uh, at the bar? Yeah, like when I always, we always train with mats. So before comps and things, I never take them away, like training with, without mats. Uh, but the thing is that I, like competition is almost always about planning your combos. Uh, so you can lose so many points by doing stupid choices. Uh, for example, I never do combos that I like, that I'm unsure of. Uh, and some people may say like, yeah, but you did this combo one year ago. You should switch up something new. But like for me, it's all about landing uh, and the holding statics as well is something that some people stress with. Uh, and it's really easy to do it in a competition. But uh, if you're holding the statics and doing everything right, you're going to get the high combination points and so on. Uh, so for me, it's always been about rather being a little bit safe, uh, but landing everything and making it clean uh, instead of really pushing for these big moves where there's a high probability of failing. Mm -hmm. Definitely makes sense. And it's also something that you see a lot of strong athletes do at the competition that they try like a crazy, crazy move. Yeah. Um, and then they fail. And I can imagine that failing is like a really, really big uh, thing, like mindset wise at a, yeah. in a competition when you're under time pressure. And That's also one thing I always have. I always have one combo where if I fail something, uh, I don't go back to the combo I was planning to do. Uh, so I just grab the bar and do a combo that automatically, like, <laughs> automatically uh, I know what to do. Like I've done mm -hmm. it so many times, so I don't have to think about the fail and like, okay, but what should I do next? Uh, that's something really good to have. So you're mm -hmm. not afraid of failing. And uh, also 
when you've done the trick so many times, you can feel if you're going to catch it or not. Uh, so in the FIBA, for example, I, I was planning on doing a triple 360. Uh, but when I did the double, I felt like, no, it doesn't feel right. So instead of doing a triple, I, I just I settled with a double 360. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think anyone noticed it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think it was a good choice. Like, it ain't worth it. True. So you ha you also have to be like you have to take decisions really quickly and listen to your body yeah. and listen like be aware of the flow that you're in. Exactly, because oh. you've done a trick so many times, like you know if it feels right or not. So, and that's the thing about doing things that you're confident about, because you know before you're gonna fail if you're gonna fail. Mm -hmm. So, and that's like. That's a, it's a good thing to have. Wow. Well, that's super cool. Like in, in these 10, 15 minutes already so much competition advice, like, um, yeah, <laughs> super, super interesting. Um, let's uh, switch back a few years. Um, yeah. Can you tell us how you got into the sport? How was your, like, what sport did you do before street workout? Can you tell us, take us in your, uh, the, to your journey? The big journey. Yeah. Uh, I've always been a swimmer. Uh, did swimming for yeah at least 10 years um, and then um, I, I've always enjoyed it still do it today uh, not as much though maybe sometimes like two times a month maximum uh, but more like a, a relaxing way because I enjoy it um, but there was a period where I wanted to start going to the gym because of the physique like to build a great body um, And uh, so I hit the gym for roughly one year. Uh, and I don't know exactly when, but I started doing handstand attempts and uh, just doing it against the wall and nothing to do with calisthenics, really. It was just I wanted the handstand skill. <laughs> and um, I did that for probably half a year. And then I switched gym. Uh, and that's where my big journey started uh, because at this gym, Uh, I had a personal trainer uh, by the name of Eng Emil Langley. Uh, and uh, he saw that I was training handstand. And at that time, almost no one at the gym did it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got to get like, uh, we started working out with each other. And um, he taught me and showed me like how much the, the calisthenics world was. Like I thought it was just handstand. He showed me the front lever, and I, I was super impressed. Uh, then the flange thought it was impossible. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then he took me to Extreme Fabrik, and, uh, and it is the place we're doing freestyle now. And, uh, yeah, he, he showed me the whole team, like Marlin, Daniel, Dan, and all these people. Uh, and at that time, that, that really blew my mind. Like seeing them doing the freestyle was was insane. Uh, and um, after that, like I started training with all these people, and uh, they've been training at that time like at least four years, I think, or roughly. Uh, so they had a lot of experience, and uh, I think that's also why I evolved pretty pretty quick because they know what worked and also what didn't work. So yeah. In the gym, have you been like, like, have you been super strong? Like, uh, was it super easy? Like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's one thing as well. I, I do believe I got good genes. Like, I've always had it pretty easy to build mass mm -hmm. and uh, always been like, yeah, a little bit like the stronger. Yeah, one of the strongest in like the classes, uh, even when I was younger and didn't really work out. I've always been a little bit bigger and uh, I definitely think that helped. And uh, also motivation wise, it, it didn't take that long before I started seeing like results physically as well. And uh, yeah, motivation is pretty much key. Uh, it doesn't really matter what makes you motivated, but as long as you have something, it, it's definitely drives the workouts forward. Mm-hmm. What was the, the main reason that you started Calisthenics uh, off? Like, is it the, the community or was it to build like a, an even better physique? Or like, what's the, what was the main reason? I, in the beginning, like, 
I, to be honest, I, I was get, getting kind of bored of just mm-hmm. lifting weights. And when I, I didn't really see like the, the potential in it, like lifting weights, all I could see was yeah, getting a better body. But then I looked at the calisthenics athletes and I'm like, okay, they had great bodies. So I might just do that as well mm-hmm. if I'm only looking for a great body. But like then when I saw how much was involved in the calisthenics community, uh, like <laughs> there was, uh, I was sold directly. Uh, so I always trained front lever and clench and freestyle as well and uh, enjoyed every workout. Mm-hmm. When I went to the gym, like sometimes I had to just push myself. I really didn't, I wasn't really motivated to work out. Uh, but when, when I started calisthenics, there were so many things I wanted to learn. And uh, it made me like, I really wanted to work out <laughs> every day. I had to stop myself like to really take a rest day. Uh, that's the hardest part. <laughs> True. Yeah. Even in the beginning, like you're progressing so quick, like uh, for, for at least like a lot of people, And it's so hard not to overtrain and to like, uh, because the joints need time in the beginning and yeah. like they don't grow as much, as quick as, as your biceps, for example. Um, yeah. But I also think like the re- I've always like worked out in some way. And the, when I was swimming, I, we trained like five or six times a week. So my body has always been used to working out. Uh, and there's a lot of like back muscles involved in swimming uh, and it made me like the freestyle you need back muscles and like front lever as well a lot of back so um, I started progressing pretty fast in these areas and the, the, I think that also is like the reason why I stack around um, because I saw results pretty quick and uh, Yeah, results are always like great motivate, <laughs> great motivation yeah. uh, to see that you're actually getting something out of it. Sure. So first goal was the handstand, if I'm if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, can you tell us like uh, how long did it take to to unlock the the handstand and what was next? Uh, the handstand, I I started grinding on my own uh, on the gym, uh, so. It was a long time ago, uh, but I can't really remember how long it took, but I got a pretty good handstand like over one year, maybe around one year I trained it. And, um, but at the time I be- had been training like the gym for one year. So I, I definitely think that helped me because I did a lot of shoulder exercises as well. So, but yeah, roughly one year for the handstand. And uh, then when I, I started doing some handstand push-ups as well uh, against the wall and uh, just training for that. And I think it was because I saw it on YouTube or something like that. Uh, but then when I started training on the new, new gym uh, with uh, Emil, uh, he, uh, like he showed me there were so many things. And the front lever was one move that I was strong in from the beginning. Like in the planche, I had struggled with like tuck planche, uh, whereas the front lever, I, like I could f- see myself doing it. Um, so the front lever was the move I started putting most time in, mm-hmm. uh, and it was the next one I unlocked. Nice. Did you think in the beginning that you would become that strong? Like, did you ever think of becoming a professional calisthenics athlete? No. <laughs> definitely not like that's the thing that's probably evolved the most is like the mindset that it's possible uh, especially when you, you started training you, you started off with a tuck plunge and tuck tuck of everything basically <laughs> and that was hard uh, and then you progress to the next step and that's also hard like doing straddle or advanced tuck and stuff uh, so definitely when I started off no I had no clue I was going to be here today. And did you ever think like that your height is uh, is something that can hold you back at all from from performing at a high level level? Like that's all that's a huge area because I think many tall people 
see it as a disadvantage. And uh, like to be honest, sometimes it's gonna take a little bit longer time to learn a few things. And sometimes I feel bad for the joints when I do freestyle. Uh, but I've always, when I started training, I was, I was always surrounded by pretty tall people. And I think that helped me a lot because I never saw it as a disadvantage because like, I never thought like, yeah, it would be much easier if I was shorter or lighter. And uh, so I definitely think it's the mindset that uh, you believe it's the size that's going to stop you. Uh, even though like, yeah, it might be to some extent, but if you're thinking about it too much, I think it's going to stop you. <laughs> so sure. uh, yeah, I had to erase that thought. Yeah. And like Sweden and also the, the, the Nordic countries in like they the people are taller than usual. Right. Uh, yeah. They are yeah, one, one of the tallest. <laughs> we got some like steroids food or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's good. I think it's really important. We also had like a few people in the in the Instagram um, when we asked for for your questions, and they told us like th there were like a few de demotivated people, like uh, really yeah. Uh, saying, "Yeah, I'm I'm close to giving up uh, on my plant or or on my front lever." And um, do you have like maybe some advice that you can share um, to somebody who is tall and heavy uh, like you? Like when it comes to the training wise, I think it's, you got to find a way that is like funny to work out with and uh, like, you got to enjoy the workout. Uh, so I've always done training with resistance band because it's given me the opportunity to really feel how it is to be in a planes, planes position. Even if I like, I, I can't hold it, but the resistance band makes me feel like I'm doing it. And also, like, it, it's going to take some time to, to get these moves. Uh, and uh, even, like, if you are a big person, like, I, I'm telling you, it's definitely worth the grind. <laughs> Because when you finally get these moves, it's going to look so damn dope. Because <laughs> the thing about, for example, freestyle that I, I enjoy so much about Daniel License, it's, like, he's a great athlete, and the things he does is insane uh but what really shocked me was his size like when you're a big person doing things there's so much energy uh and uh, yeah it's so like <laughs> when you, even though it's hard to, to get there uh it's so worth it and uh, sometimes like sometimes you gotta have the goal as a motivation and uh during the like some extents you're gonna have discipline Uh, maybe for the majority of the time, like if you're disciplined for the periods where you're not motivated, uh, there's going to be points where you get motivation. Like you're going to have, you're going to see results. Uh, even if like planche and front, they are big moves and take time. Uh, I definitely also recommend switching up the workouts. Uh, if you're feeling like you're just like digging a hole and not get, getting anywhere. Uh, so sometimes I can like if I'm really not feeling for a workout I can switch it up and maybe like do a gym workout just to get some pump or like do exercises that also help uh, even though they're not like they're indirectly helping uh, so maybe like a shoulder press or something uh, just for the hands and like a shoulder is always a shoulder so if you're working it out it's going to help you in other areas as well so mm -hmm. switching up the workout and like really enjoying the workout is my my main advice <laughs> cool thanks for sharing and so like as you said like the 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 work is harder but the reward like the harder the work the yeah. bigger the reward afterwards exactly. when you unlock it and i i mean like the recognition and the um all the i don't know the, the the impressed looks like you get at the fibo that you get at the uh, like piece of the bars event yeah. like this is i guess it's like a um just the return and the payback of of the, all the hard work and going the extra mile because i also think that's like the the high level athletes like we always see them as a little bit shorter mm -hmm. uh, 
and I think if more people are going to get involved, like uh, the mixture of tall, high, big, small, like when we get more, yeah, more uh, a greater variety of people, like I think more people are going to be motivated as well. Because if you only see like, okay, this is the typical person that's at the highest level, like, okay, I'm already done. Like I don't, I don't look like him or her or anyone. So uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel like, if more peop- big people are going to start training calisthenics and more people are going to come to the top and more people are going to get motivated as well. Uh, yeah. So I believe it's just because the sport is kind of small. Uh, the, the elite level is dominated by a certain type of person. Yeah, and the more people, the more diversity it, it, they, you know, people Indeed. like you bring into the sport, the more people we're going to attract. And um, yeah, true. Question that also came from the community. Um, what's your opinion about weight categories in, in freestyle? Do you sometimes feel that there should be weight categories? Like, yeah, I, to be honest, yes. I mean... If you're looking at the the big sports like boxing and stuff like that, like they always have weight classes, and because there, there's always going to be privileges with being big, and there's going to be like downsides as well, and uh, therefore like the biggest competitions I think should be different classes, uh, whether it's weight. Yeah, I mean weight is probably bigger than the height, but uh, yeah, I I think there should be weight classes. So. And like what I see is that the sport is currently like too small. And that's what you also said yeah. that the big competitions should have that. But like for a small competition, it's, it's really hard. Like it's even yeah. hard like <laughs> a lot for a lot of competitions. I know that they can't get enough, enough female athletes already exactly. for, for all weight classes uh, to participate. And then uh, like um, they are happy when one category is full you know like it's yeah, yeah we we did it um, and if you would that's if you would split that now into uh, three or four weight categories <laughs> damn that's uh, that's yeah. like that would be hard um but as you said like the big competitions um that would be a big step i think as well so it's definitely something the sport is gonna like work towards uh because it's so understandable it can't be done at every competition then you're gonna have like two people in each category doesn't yeah. make sense so. yeah yeah interesting um can you tell us uh, your plant journey so i would be also be super super interested in how it went like um when when did you start like what were the first exercises were you already that heavy uh, when you started working out or did you first unlock the plant and then bulk up your weight Can you tell us as mu- in as much detail as, as you as can? can? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pledge I, I would try to make people understand. Awesome. <laughs> so Thank you. I started off at pretty much 70 kilograms. Uh, and that was after I like had almost two years of gym workout. Uh, so the first exercise that I did with the planche was, of course, tuck planche. Uh, because at the time I, I was watching a lot of YouTube. Uh, videos like tutorials and seeing people progress uh, so tuck bench was something that almost everyone recommends uh, so I did that one uh, and then I started off by doing a little bit of leans as well um, and then I also combined it since I was a gym lad from the beginning <laughs> uh, I combined like okay so this one takes a lot of core strength and shoulders uh, so I usually did planche uh, workout i started off with tuck planche and doing my body weight and then i would end the workout by doing some gym workouts uh, for the shoulders uh, and i loved the handstand at the time as well uh, so I, almost every workout i started off by doing some handstand attempts and uh, probably a few handstand push-ups uh, along the way as well uh, and then it came to like a period where like i wanted to be in the position uh, and that's where i started like using resistance band uh, because i could like t- take my tuck planche to almost straddle planche uh, with a bigger band of course but it was really easy to see progress as well because you could hold it for five seconds and a few weeks later you had a much smaller resistance band uh, that had it for the same period of time 
uh, and after that I I started like enjoying this workout so much I stopped doing the gym the gym stuff <laughs> and uh, my my main things that I did was probably like tuck uh, uh, tuck planche push ups uh, without resistance band uh, and then I started doing straddle push ups with resistance band. Uh, I did a lot of holds with resistance band, <laughs> common theme here. <laughs> um, and uh, the full, when I had like straddle planche for roughly five seconds without the resistance band, uh, I started training the full planche. And uh, when I did so, I started a lot of races. Uh, so negative, uh, negative straddle and uh, full, uh, full planche negatives as well. Uh, even though it was really hard. <laughs> and uh, the leans has also been something I've always been improving on because in the beginning, like my, the form on my leans were absolutely trash. And uh, you get so much advice from... Yeah. yeah, the reason I got good was because I trained with great people like uh, Marlin, Daniel and Emil, and they, they know a lot. Uh, so they gave me a lot of exercises as well that had worked for them. And uh, so they corrected my leans and uh, in general what I had to think about. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's my journey. I still, <laughs> upon this day, think planche is like, it's hard. Uh, in, in bad days when you're feeling weak, uh, I can roughly hold a full bench. Like uh, the front level is another thing I... I can always like hold three seconds at least, uh, but the planche uh, is still struggling. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, still working a lot on the planche. Nice, and you still train with resistance bands? What I saw, like in your in yeah. your story, you <laughs> you did some full planche to a straddle planche push ups, like um, uh, with resistance bands in your in your backyard. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, always when people ask me like if i have an advice i always tell them like leans is number one because it's you can do it right away mm -hmm. uh, and uh, number two is resistance band like it's just a great way to keep a steady repetition or a steady uh, hold like in the beginning of the workout i usually start with like a lightweight resistance band uh, and i always try to have like minimum four repetitions uh, or at least like five seconds hold when I'm doing things. Uh, but then towards the end of the workout, I, I'm of course going to be more tired. So sometimes I switch up the resistance band to a stronger one so I can keep these repetitions. Um, and it has worked for me. So I give it as an advice and people can try it out, even though it's different for people, but I enjoy it. That's cool. Like when you talk about um, the the time that you uh, like the time under tension or the time you hold like an exercise, is there like a rule of thumb that you can give um, how you train? Do you like in your static sets, do you go to the maximum in every hold or do you always have like one or two seconds in reserve? Uh, like how do you how do you structure it? Uh, per almost always doing it till to failure. Mm -hmm. almost always uh, but since I'm doing it with resistance band it's I don't know it, it feels better for the body like even though I maximize my repetitions in for example front level pull-ups uh, I try to do at least five uh, and on the sixth I might, might feel like I'm not going to make it the whole way uh, to the top and then then I stop there because I'm not going to do this like okay repetitions uh, so I always try to have like good form on the reps which also means that I'm to some extent pushing myself to limit but not exactly where I'm like absolutely sore in the muscles um, so repetitions wise I always try to do around five uh, and when it comes to the holds it's almost five seconds as well uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Like when we talk about uh, structuring and programming, can you tell us your current uh, split, like workout split that you have for the week? Yeah. Um, I, in the beginning of the week, I got one main front lever workout. Uh, and that includes doing one on front lever. It includes pull-ups, uh, front lever pull-ups, and uh, holds in general, wide front lever. Uh, 
so it's a work at just basically getting stronger for the front. Mm -hmm. um, the next day I got uh, planche, uh, and that also includes Maltese holes, uh, getting stronger for that one. Uh, then I got a rest day, and then we have freestyle uh, in the middle of the week. Uh, and uh, I almost always do like one and a half hour freestyle. Uh, and when I'm starting to feel the hands and all that, I go on and do handstands. Uh, almost always handstands when I'm tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and um, then after that, I got a split workout. So I do pretty much my favorite uh my favorite front lever uh, exercises and uh, my favorite planche exercises as a combination. Uh, and then I also got one day where I uh, do only handstand uh, variations and especially a lot of one-on training at the moment. Uh, and then I combine it with doing core strength, uh, so dragon flags and things that will yeah, benefit me. Uh, and then I got... Uh, another freestyle session uh, at the end of the week. So two freestyles and uh, about two times a week I try and clench and uh, front lever. Wow, cool. Um, so overall, how many workouts is this per, uh, per week? Is this six, six workouts? Six. Okay. Yeah. And how, how long does one session uh, last? Uh, statics. Uh, it's uh, about one and a half or two hours. And uh, the freestyle, we're usually at the place for yeah, two to three hours. But when we're there, there's a lot of people. So we, we talk a lot and it's not really working out. Maybe two hours of work workout. <laughs> okay. And uh, like somebody also asked for your favorite exercise um for for planche and for shoulder strength maybe um do you have like a i don't know one two three exercise that you can share for planche and for yeah. for front lever both yeah for the planche uh, i always begin the workout with doing doing it with my own body weight um and that includes doing push-ups is the one that i'm putting a lot of focus on now mm -hmm. uh, so i always start with doing clench push-ups uh, and uh, after that i go on to do holds uh, and this especially with different variations uh, i'm not very flexible in the wrist though so i always mm -hmm. do it on p-bars uh, but different variations with p-bars and doing holds and uh, then in the end of the workout i usually do things that i can like change the tension uh, so for example the leans Uh, if I'm feeling tired, I just don't lean as much. Uh, but that's something I do at the end. Uh, and also, I do use dumbbells, uh, especially in my Maltese progress and in planche. Uh, so I pretty much lay on the floor and use dumbbells to strengthen the shoulders. Uh, and uh, that one has worked a lot very, very, <laughs> very well for me. So yeah, that's my main uh, bench. And for the front lever, I do the same pull-ups. Uh, it's one that I've been focusing, uh, focusing a lot on. Uh, so pull-ups with resistance bands. Uh, and um, I believe it, it helps me a lot. If you're doing a pull-up, you're, like, you're in the front lever position as well, uh, in the bottom and uh, through the whole workout. So I always start with it. And uh, then I do one arm. Uh, front lever holds uh, also with resistance band uh, because uh, yeah, pull-ups and one arm is like two main goals uh, that I want to have with the front lever um, and besides that front lever races is also one that I've been doing for a long time and feel a good connection with uh, and uh, yeah I think those are like my main ones cool Like when you say one arm, I have to share one story. Um, I like I don't remember who it was. It's not even important. But I heard uh, like uh, some people talk at the FIBO and they said like, "Oh, what the, who's this Simon? Like I've never heard of him uh, before." And um, they said like, uh, "If he would uh, be able, because I remember at the FIBO you didn't do a one arm front lever." No, um, I didn't. 
and uh, these people said like if you would uh, if he would have done uh, like a one arm uh, front lever and, or if he would be able to do a one arm front lever i think he would easily like not easily but he would be able to uh, to beat daniels and uh, yeah. like <laughs> then then a few days later i i thought about it i i had it in the back of my head but i think i didn't see you consciously doing a one arm front lever and then wow. like when i saw you doing it i don't know if, if it was a post or a story uh, but i thought yeah there uh, there 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 it is so um yeah that's, yeah, that's super i've got strong. a lot of people writing to me like you gotta post more about your one arm uh, because i did it a few like piece of the bars i did it mm -hmm. uh, all right for not the best uh, but when it came to this competition like if i'm doing a one arm uh, i'm only comfortable with starting off with doing mm -hmm. a one arm uh That's why I'm working on it pretty much now because I want to be able to do it like after a combination or something like that. Yeah. And uh, for the FIB, I already had everything planned. And then I was like, all right, I, I have the front lever one arm, but I might do it if I feel like it. Uh, and when I, yeah, when I done my combos and on the P bars, for example, I was like, okay, if I feel strong enough, I can switch up the normal front to one arm. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment i was uh, i was so tired so <laughs> <laughs> okay nice um do you feel that you're currently at your optimal weight or is is there like a weight drop or loss uh, no drop yeah but, uh, like uh, how is it like I, i'm missing the word but do you want to go up in weight or uh, uh at the moment i i feel like i got some extra weight that's unnecessary Uh, so like when it comes to my, I've added a little bit of running, uh, mm -hmm. to my workouts, uh, just because I want to drop to around maybe 84 kilograms, maybe just drop a few, not, not that much at all. Uh, but I don't believe I'm going to be much more heavy than this. Uh, so it depends if I will a lot of muscle there muscles the the mass is gonna come as well mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment i'm trying to drop like a few kilograms but nothing huge uh, okay interesting because uh, i was already thinking like 90 kg would be insane like but, <laughs> but i can imagine there is also the sweet spot like uh between uh yeah i don't know 90 kg sounds crazy but i think it's yeah. like it's too much but yeah Like, Before I forget it, I have to ask you how how tall are you? Because uh, this is also something it will be everywhere in the comments otherwise. Yeah, uh, 185 centimeters. So uh, pretty tall as well. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing about the mass. Like I haven't stopped growing yet. Like since four years ago when I started off at 70, 72 kilograms roughly, I've always been like going up. And Beast of the Bars, I was around 80 kilograms, I think, or something, a little bit over. Uh, and now I'm at, I peaked at 86. So the thing is that I'm not seeing a stop yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I might just keep on going. But uh, yeah. But are you also growing in height still? No, not that much. Okay. Okay. Yeah really uh fascinating um another question uh yeah like what's your favorite workout equipment you already told us i think one or two times maybe 10 times about the resistance bands but uh like yeah. um what what is your like the the, the equipment that the you're next one using? is probably p bars for sure mm -hmm. uh, i i don't know how many p bars i got but there's a lot <laughs> <laughs> and especially now i got all the ones from Grenation, so i pretty much got one for all the different scenarios so i i don't know i like i like to have them when i'm traveling uh, because it's like i can do the planche and the handstand and yeah you, it's it makes it possible to do almost like a full workout just with a set of p-bars uh, so definitely prefer them cool um do you train with chalk and yeah uh, like if yes uh, then yeah. with with powder chalk or liquid chalk like uh liquid when i'm doing statics mm -hmm. uh for like to get a good grip uh but when i'm doing freestyle i do prefer the the other one <laughs> yeah. uh because uh, liquid is almost too good grip for me when i'm doing freestyle uh 
and uh, I also have a ten. I I put the bar in almost my fingertips when I'm mm. doing freestyle freestyle because I I don't know it's just the way I've been training. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. So I like to have it rather a little bit slippy to be honest than too much grip. And especially if you're doing bigger moves like giants and stuff, I I don't want to rip. <laughs> yeah. So makes sense. And I can already t- tell you. Uh, I mean, you already saw it at the feeble, but there, but, but there will also be like chalk blocks and chalk powder uh, in the in the yeah. near, near future. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to to send it to you because I we see a lot of uh, freestyle athletes pre- uh, preferring um, powder chalk because of yeah. Uh, yeah just the different attributes of it. Um, and for statics, like liquid or like wraps, also liquid um, is is preferred. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's really good for the bars as well, for the freestyle, because with the liquid, it it has, sometimes it gets stuck on the bar as well. Mm-hmm. And like, either you clean it all the time uh, or you rip your hands. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no in between. True. Nice. Uh, yeah. Pre- uh, preventing injuries. Uh, that's also an interesting topic because... Um, if you weigh a lot also there's a lot of, like a lot of pressure on the joints yeah. um how did you like how was your injury uh history like did you have injuries and if not like how did you prevent them like that's the thing one reason i have progressed so fast is also because i haven't been injured uh, not like in a big way at least and uh, it's pretty interesting because I'm not the person that does a lot of warm up, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> like <laughs> for me, to some extent, it's a little bit magic because I feel like I should be more injured sometimes. Uh, so then I it made me think about like my workouts, and I definitely think I haven't injured myself because the workouts are really good, adapted for who I am. Mm-hmm. And uh, for example, resistance band and stuff like that has, I think it's a soft way to work out the body. And uh, also, like knowing when to stop uh, is something that's been hard, but definitely something I learned along the way. And uh, when the workouts are being like the top notch, <laughs> uh, for example, like now I'm getting more progress than I've done in a long time. Uh, and I know that this is the perfect time to take a deload week because when I'm do when I'm getting so much progress, uh, I know it puts a lot of tension in the muscles and the body. So I got to step down at that point. Mm-hmm. But uh, so learning what signals your body is giving is probably the number one key. Uh, and of course, I'm I'm warming up the wrist a little bit extra if I'm doing a handstand workout or things like that uh, and freestyle as well uh, a lot of like that's pretty much the whole body uh, warming up uh, but uh, overall i think it's adapting the workout to your body like mm-hmm. it shouldn't feel that painful when you're working out okay cool i expected like a secret uh pill or a secret <laughs> formula but uh yeah i mean I, I we have to live with that um and listening to your body is also like really important like for a lot of areas in in, in calisthenics yeah um what's your goal for the future like what uh, can we expect uh, from you in the in the next month and maybe the also month. in the in the next years well the next competition that's upcoming is the nationals. And uh, I'm hoping to, I think they still got like the number one person from the nationals gets to participate in the world championship. And uh, like the plans for the summer is basically to uh, compete in the world championship. Um, that's the, it's been a main goal for a while. And, uh, but since it was in Russia as well, before it, it already was a little bit of a struggle to get there. So I really wanted to feel complete before I went. Uh, but like this year, it really feels like a good opportunity to mm-hmm. compete. And also because I met so many athletes at FIBO, uh, like just going there, meeting many people again is just a nice moment. <laughs> so the world championship is uh, 
like the number one go. Uh, and training wise, I just there's a lot of moves I'm training for. Uh, freestyle is a lot more to work on, <laughs> especially after fever. There's so many, so many things I want to learn. Um, and in the statics, like my Maltese power, I'm uh, I'm progressing on, and that's something I want to get stronger at. Um, but besides that, I'm like I don't have any like super big goals with the training. Uh, but I, I definitely think. Like, there's going to be a lot of years that are going to be involved with calisthenics. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely planning on keep on going for, for a while. <laughs> nice. That's good to hear. Like, uh, I'm also really looking forward on where the journey will take us, uh, like, uh, take you. So, um, yeah. Um, questions also about your diet, like uh, diet and also supplements. Um, how do you eat? Like, how important is nutrition for you? And uh, how, how, like, what's your opinion on supplements? Uh, well, it it varies. The the supplements, I creatine is the only one I like take on a regular basis. Uh, and besides that, I've taken protein powder. Like that sometimes. Uh, it's not nothing I take every day. Um, but the creatine is. And besides that, I, I think you get enough from the food you eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, I've always tried to eat pretty healthy. I've never counted calories or things like that. But like, you you see if a food is good or bad in some sense. So I've always tried to eat healthy, uh, even though I'm not that strict. Uh, and when it comes to sugar, I think that's the the main diet thing that I got now. Uh, so me and Daniel, we made a deal till the nationals, no one is allowed to eat sugar. Like, uh, uh, and that includes like candy and things that are obviously sugar in. Uh, so, and it helps me not in like, not in the sense of losing weight or things like that, but when it comes to the energy in the workouts, I, I feel so, I feel light, <laughs> even though I'm pretty heavy, but I feel <laughs> light in the workouts and I feel like I got a solid amount of energy throughout the whole workout. Uh, whereas when I ate sugar back, yeah, like when I eat a lot of sugar one day, the next day, if I'm working out that day, it's, it's not going to be that good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I think it, cutting out the sugar, is, it's been a huge thing for me. So that's the diet part. <laughs> nice really really interesting um yeah we are slowly coming to an end of the interview um i'm really really happy about your your time already uh we have like a few quick questions quick answers at the end of every uh, interview and the first question is uh, what's your favorite food uh food i would probably say burger Yeah, nice burger person <laughs> awesome uh, are you a dog or a cat person uh, i'm more i don't know that's when it's hard i <laughs> i've had a cat uh, love cats but if i were to buy now one now i would probably have a dog so i'm a dog that's such a common theme like <laughs> so many athletes say, yeah, I have a cat, but I, I am a dog person. So yeah. I, I think, okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, good for you. So uh, yeah. What athletes, what athletes inspire you? Uh, like from the beginning and upon this day, it's going to be Daniel license. Like he's been a huge motivation. Uh, And then, of course, there's like a lot of athletes that are really good in statics. They got really good dynamics. So like on Instagram, I follow a lot of people that are definitely inspiring. Uh, but when it comes to the overall, like if I were to look at one video to get in insane motivation, I would look at any license. So that's the nice. number one athlete that's definitely been inspiring for a long time. Cool. Do you have a favorite skill? Uh, I would say handstand <laughs> It's the one I've been doing for the longest time and still do probably five times a week at least. <laughs> nice. like, uh, just enjoying being upside down. 
That's cool. Uh, are you more a pull or push person? Uh, pull. The front lever has always been like the the number one uh, exercise. So and planche is a little bit more struggling, but so I got to choose the the pull. <laughs> nice. Uh, do you have a favorite movie? Ah, uh, it's hard. Fast and Furious has been a lot of action and cars, and yeah, nice. Probably gotta choose those. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, favorite music genre. Uh, I love uh, like Eminem. Uh, has always been, and then when it comes to freestyle, like a lot of music with big drops and bass. Uh, cool. Nice. Um, yeah. The best calisthenics event you've been at so far? I think the FIBO. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> FIBO. FIBO and Beast of the Bars are two, two events that's going to be with me for a long time. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Uh, what's your message to the calisthenics community? Uh, well, I, I definitely hope a lot of big people uh, that have been thinking about stopping calisthenics because the progress is slow or not feeling like they're gonna they have a potential in it uh, i really hope they they see me as a like proof that it's possible uh, because that's almost the only reason i'm doing all the instagram and stuff because i want to show people that like it's more than possible <laughs> like yeah definitely people that are big can achieve huge 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 potential And um, in general, I hope a lot of more people start with calisthenics. Uh, it's like the community is probably one of the best I've ever experienced. And um, also like the, the type of training is like, it's just so powerful to be able to do these things with the body. Like uh, I spoke to a lot of friends before and we discussed this, that like you're given one body and, one one brain basically when you're born and uh, like if you learn to control both of them the brain and the, the body like you're basically unstoppable <laughs> so that's what i've been grinding on like always trying to learn new things uh and always trying to push the body to new limits and i definitely think calisthenics is the the way to go for both of these areas that's true wow Thanks for sharing. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, we will put all the links in the description, but where can they reach you best if they have any questions, etc.? I Instagram is probably the one I look most regular. So yeah, Instagram. If someone writes, I always uh, write back. And uh, to be honest, when people like ask for advice and stuff, um, I'm not, I, I love to give advice, to be honest. I'm, I'm not the one to like, you know, buy the schedule or something. So if they have any questions or want an exercise that they should try out or something, it's, it's just <laughs> give it, send a message. Awesome. Big, big thank you uh, for taking the time for this interview. I really appreciated it. And uh, I really think there was like a lot of uh, useful advice in it. And I think uh, a lot of people got motivation, but also knowledge about uh, their training. And I'm super hyped now to go train because uh, like uh, I'm also <laughs> like, dear. I don't know what it is, but it's like, um, like it's just so motivating to see somebody def like against all odds you know like against the, yeah. the 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 physics and like it's so motivating um I, and i think you have the same feeling when you see daniels or when you saw daniels perform like uh, years ago yeah. but it's like so so motivating the physique the the performance the uh the 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 discipline of sticking with it so um i'm always like and uh, after this interview specifically i'm motivated to go train um and uh, yeah care. really big thank you for your time uh thanks for for being thank a part you. of the team and uh yeah um, thank you for being here <laughs> letting me speak i'm really happy to get the opportunity awesome so yeah thank you <laughs> Yeah, and thanks also to everybody listening to this till the end. It's been a longer interview and I'm super happy about it because there, there was like a lot of useful information in it. I think if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It helps a lot. And uh, yeah, 
if you have any more questions to Simon, leave it in the comments and then maybe we'll do a second episode. Let's see. Um, after, so. after the <laughs> World World Cups, uh, World, World Championship uh, um, win, like maybe we'll see. Uh, we will do a second interview. So um, yeah, all the best and uh, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.